All right, so I would like to introduce you to some coding and we're gonna primarily focus on Sprite Lab. So I've assigned the Express curriculum to you. So when you go to code.org, um, you can press on the black C-O-D-E to get to sort of your dashboard. Um, and then there's projects if you're gonna start your own. Once you get logged in, you press the sign in button and then you would use the red continue with Google so that you get to use your school account. And then just make sure that you select your school account. Um, I'm going to choose not my school account just so I can show up as a student. But make sure that you log in with your school account. All right, so when you log in, it might bring you right to the Express course. If it does not, like I said, you can press on the CODE. It'll be your dashboard. And then down the bottom here, it should say Express course, and you would click View Course. So I think even though um, this is set up in a whole bunch of different ways, I like to introduce you using um, one of the, some sort of out of order. So one of the lessons that I like to introduce you to is variables with artists. So variables, if you think about variables in terms of math class, you might think of something like X or N. And if I said X plus one equals three, then you would probably be able to figure out that x is 2 because 2 plus 1 is 3. And um, in math, whatever x equals in that particular equation, it's always going to equal that. But when we talk about variables in coding, then the variable is just sort of like a placeholder and the variable can actually change. So for example, if I said I want to set a variable to represent my score, then as you get more points, your variable for score is going to change. It's going to go up. Or let's say that I made a variable for lives. Then I might say, okay, uh, your lives are going to go down every time you, you know, lose um, a life. So you can name a variable. And in coding, you can actually use a name. So in math, usually you use a letter like X because normally you're writing it by hand and it would just be cumbersome to solve your equations with a word even though the variable oftentimes represents something. But in coding, you just write it once and then um, it's there for you to use. So for example, if I name my variable score, that word score is gonna be available for me to use in my code. Um, so I'm just gonna have you get started in lesson 19, variables with artist. And this kind of shows you how the coding works. I would recommend going one through six. Um, and the variable primarily is going to be used here to represent the length and that way you don't have to guess the length every single time as you get started. All right so that's basically an intro so let's just jump right in here to lesson number 19 part one and it says let's draw an equilateral triangle. If you remember from math class equilateral means all the sides are the same and I know the angles in these triangles are 60 degrees. Um, however, if you're drawing, if you're going forward and you have to kind of turn backward to be able to draw upward, it's um, a straight line is 180. So I have to turn backward 120 degrees to get that angle there. So that's going to um, help you a little bit. It also says that it has to be exactly 50 pixels long. And a pixel, uh, which you probably know, is sort of like a dot on the screen. So each little dot on the screen draws an image. And um, as our resolution has gotten very good in our computers, um, the curves and things look very smooth. But when you first had a computer in the resolution, or if you have an older one, uh, the resolution is less. That means you have less pixels on a screen, so it's harder to make really fine detailed images. All right, so this is saying that distance is 50 pixels long. Let's draw an equilateral triangle. So it says, notice that the blocks now have a new way to enter numbers. These math blocks can be pulled out and moved around. So um, there's different numbers. You can, like they just said, you can pull this one and put it in. You can turn in a different degree. And they actually have it set up for you really nicely uh, with the 50 pixels that you need and the 120 degrees that you need. So if I were going to take this character and draw the move function, the move, not function, the move command, the code, the move block, um, would draw as you're going forward. <clears throat> and then, uh, we don't see it here, but it's going to show up later on and jump won't draw. All right, so I'm going to have this pencil. I'm going to pretend I put it down and I'm going to walk forward. This little character is facing 
uh, this direction. So I'm going to walk forward 50 pixels. And then I'm going to have them turn that way. So I'm going to have them turn to the left 120 degrees. And then we want to do this again. So I want them to move forward 50. And then I'm going to have them turn left again. And then I'm going to have them move forward 50. So I could do it this way and say move forward 50, turn left again, like I just said, and then move forward 50. And I could run this code, but I do see there's a repeat loop, but I'm just going to show you what happens when I click run. All right. So I could have turned at the end and it wouldn't have affected anything. So if you notice that I have move forward, turn left, move forward, turn left, if I had a move forward, turn left, it wouldn't really change how I drew it. So if you can identify a pattern, so let me just put that there to show you, that I have move forward, turn left, move forward, turn left, move forward, turn left, it's all the same thing. So I could use a repeat block, and I put that back in here. And now the repeat block, if I say do this three times, one, two, three, I don't need all the rest of this code. And as you play around with it, you'll notice you can drag these out and put them in. They're kind of like little puzzle pieces that fit together. And these, they snap together um, when they're near each other. There's a little notch that you fit it into. Um, and when I put the repeat block up underneath when run, then I had to put this inside of the whole repeat block. Um, and then the last thing is if this repeat block didn't snap in there when i press run um, it wouldn't play so you have to make sure it's actually on the run command all right so let me press that again and it said seven out of seven blocks um, used so i actually cut it down a little bit so now it says use another loop to draw three of those triangles right next to each other you can nest the code from your last puzzle inside <clears throat> so go ahead and give this a try see if you can figure it out it's kind of fun to just play around with the code and see what happens before you give it a try so if you needed help on this one i will talk you through my thinking i know i have to draw three triangles um, if i draw the same way i did before i would end up here so i would have to start out uh, with an extra move forward block to get to that spot so if I go around this triangle, I could just do this part twice, perhaps. Uh, so let me just do, do this triangle. So that would be move forward and turn left, and I would do that three times. So that's going to get me to here. So I go one, turn left, two, turn left, three, turn left. Now I would need to move forward to get to the next triangle one more time and then I could take this whole thing and do it again um, and since I'm saying do this whole thing again I can just use a repeat block around it so that means I, I would draw another triangle and then go forward so that would be twice and then I would draw another triangle and I don't really need to go forward but I don't think it's gonna hurt if I do that um, so <clears throat> let's just see what happens. So this is a nested loop. So I've got a loop inside of a loop. So let's see what happens here. All right, so um, one more thing I wanted to show you in lesson two here is that this button here, the turtle and the hare, um, or the tortoise and the hare, maybe the turtle and the rabbit, whatever you want to say, you can adjust that and it'll go at a different speed. Sometimes um, in different sections of lessons, there'll be a step button and the step button will let you just go through each command as it appears. So if I slow this down a little bit, you can also see it turns yellow. So it turns yellow um, as it's going through the different codes. So it's drawing the triangle and then it moves forward and then it's all done. All right, so in part three of lesson 19, variables are placeholders for information that can change. So having a placeholder makes it possible to write a program even when you don't know all of your values until later. So blocks to know is set the first number to two. 
And then there is a video that you can um, watch right in your code.org. So pause me and watch your code.org video. Okay, so as they mentioned in the video, um, I hope you watched along. They're going to use the variable length, which I gave you a little preview in my intro. So the length is going to represent the side of the shape that you're going to do. So they're going to just test you after a little um, video with some knowledge. So let's see, a knowledge check. We have set the variable length to 50. What will happen when you click run? A, the artist will draw a triangle with 50 pixel sides. B, the artist will draw a 50-sided polygon with three pixel sides. C, the artist will draw three open sides with 50 degree turns. D, I don't know. Take a look at the code and see what you think. What did you think? I think it is A. It's just like last time, move forward, turn left, and it's doing it three times, and the length is 50. Okay, so now on to lesson 19, part six. Before things get tricky, you can move the length of 50 into a variable so we can use it in the next few puzzles. Okay, all right, so right here it's empty. And so in order to use a variable, you have to set the length, you have to name it first. Uh, there's a drop down here and you can see say rename or rename this variable. Um, and they set it up for you in length, as length when you're in the project area, that's not necessarily the case. So at the very beginning of my code, I'm going to set my length to 50. And then whenever I want to move forward, I'm going to move forward whatever that length is. Okay, so then I'm just going to drag this length down in here. So instead of using a number like I did before, I'm using the variable name. So now I'll know that length is always going to be the same. If, for example, I set my variable length to 40, then every time I move forward, it would go forward 40. So it's gonna give me an error. I'm just gonna show you what happens if I do that. I'm gonna run it on super fast. Wow. See, the triangles are too short, um, but they're all equilateral. So if I change this to 60, obviously not what they were saying, reset and run it, wow. now they're all a little bit too big. Um, and I just set that length at one time. And so I changed how my diagram looks. So go ahead and give that a shot. Make sure that you set the length. So this is basically setting the name of your variable and you're starting, you're giving it its initial value and then you're dragging over the variable to be called on later in the program. All right, so that gives you an idea of how variables start. Um, there are some more variable lessons for you to do uh, beyond 19. If you'd like to keep going in 19 because you like using this artist, by all means, feel free. But this is where I'm going to stop my tutorial.